Now let me tell you a little bit about what's going to go on for the rest of the session. I'm going to divide up into three breakout groups. I think you have tickets, and then one of the groups changed. The first one is going to be in Hurricane, and the Hurricane group is going to stay in this room. That, that one on your ticket would be the Climate Extremes? Climate Extremes. Yep. Okay, we have to do some translation here. Climate Extremes. Okay. Then Climate Data. Is that a group? Data Collection. Data Collection. Climate Data Data Collection. That's an L1175. It's going to be a little bit back the way you came in. Okay, so you're going to go back the way you came in and you'll run into that room. And the other one is Georgia's Climate. That was probably the energy group? Yes. Okay. So, last, a little bit of a last minute change. So, when your ticket says energy, you're going to go to the you know, Georgia's Climate group. And so, the people who are going to be your session leaders, uh, why don't you guys come up so I can introduce you quickly and see who your session leaders are. Introduce them. Mr. Hurricane, which is Peter Webster. Um, now his hurricane research has received national and international attention. You may have even seen him on CNN, a uh, variety of places. He's um, quite a high profile guy. Uh, this is Dr. Jim St. John, who is going to be doing um, the climate data one. And he's um, a great teacher, one of our mainstay um, teaching faculty here. And you also see him on the news quite a bit talking about weather and winter storms. So he's actually on the local news stations quite a bit. And here we have Dr. Alex Karabinov, who is um, a research scientist. And he's going to be talking about Georgia's climate, sort of translating sort of what I talked about at the global scale down to the local scale. What does all this mean for Georgia? OK, we have a few minutes. Do people have any questions they'd like to ask me, either about climate change or about the logistics of what's going on? Yeah? What is commerce? Commerce. OK, that's trade and industry. Good question. Question. Yeah. Can you talk a little about how um, smog impacts? Are smog impacts. Okay, this, that's a really good question. You know, and, and you're, you'll see this a little bit in the climate change related to Georgia, but the temperature in Georgia has not increased very much over the last hundred years. And part of the re region is because of the air pollution and the smog that sort of keeps a lot of the sunlight out, so we haven't been warming quite as fast. And global warming, as the temperatures increase, this will actually make the pollution in the ozone situation even worse. So there's a very interesting connection between the smog and the climate change. Good question. <coughs> Any other questions? Yes. Um, what, in your estimation, what is the single greatest cause Global is carbon dioxide. Well, carbon dioxide is a big one. Yeah. The other one, per molecule, because there's a lot more, but per molecule, like methane and nitrous oxide are very potent. It's just that there's a lot less of it. So yeah, overall, carbon dioxide is the main culprit. Yeah. Do we need to find a new energy source besides fossil fuels that the main thing? Absolutely. The, 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 the dirtiest energy source is coal. Okay, natural gas is fossil fuel, but that's relatively good. The real dirty one is coal. And in the southeast US, that's our main energy source, is coal. So we need to look at alternatives. And each region is going to have different things that they want to look at. But coal is our big Achilles heel that we need to try to get away from. Um, is there any way to make coal cleaner? Well, Researchers are trying to figure that out. And actually, the chemical engineers at Georgia Tech, that's a big thing of what they're trying to do. You can try to make it cleaner, and you can also try to take the carbon dioxide, liquefy it, and then bury it. Okay, it's called carbon sequestration. So there are researchers trying to figure out how to do that, but nobody's really figured out a safe and economical way to do it yet. Um, what is Georgia's involvement in our government? Involvement in our climate change. 
Okay, the state of Georgia has really been one of these slower states to try to adopt. We're one of the few states that doesn't have a climate action plan, for example. And so Georgia Tech, we, we took it upon ourselves last uh, May to organize the first um, climate change summit, Georgia Climate Change Summit. And we'll post that website onto the LEGO site. And we invited people from you know all over the state. We had people from the governor's office, the mayor's office, from Coca-Cola, from Georgia Power, you know, people all over the state who had a stake in helping, a, you know, in needing a solution and helping us solve the problem. But Georgia is behind compared to a lot of the other states. And our neighbor Florida has really been one of the leaders in trying to do something about this. Georgia's behind, so we need the help from everybody in the room to try to keep everybody's attention on this so we can try to find some solutions to all this. As far as the uh, coal energy uh, mm -hmm. uh, that's being uh, manufactured from coal, uh, what is the, uh, what is Georgia Tech's research led them with the efficiencies for renewables? Oh, quite a bit. Um, gosh, I have a whole other presentation on what Georgia Tech's doing in the energy area, but uh, a big initiative in solar cells and so solar voltaic panels has really brought in those economically, and so there's been some major breakthroughs in that. There's been in hydrogen fuels and fuel cells, major breakthroughs, biofuels, cellulosic ethanol, how to make make that economically. And well, also the efficiency of it. Efficiency, yes. On the Georgia Tech campus, now Georgia Tech has been really been doing this for the last 10 years, trying to be more sustainable and reduce our energy. Since 1955, we reduced energy consumption on the campus by 11%, and this is in the face of increasing the number of buildings by 12 and increasing our student population by about 25 percent. So in the face of that, we've actually reduced our energy use. And a lot of it is through building leads, very efficient buildings. We're using a lot of geothermal um, heat. And also our rec center, there's some solar power in our rec center. So that's what we're asking about um, the relative efficiencies of all these things. The efficiency of the renewables. Oh, the efficiency of the renewables. Well, there's a cost. But there's a cost effective, um, you know, for each of the renewables in terms of what makes sense well, economically. Not necessarily the cost, but what is the efficiency of photovoltaics? What is the efficiency of some of the other renewable things that you're using real protect In terms of how much energy you use to actually produce it? Uh, for biofuels, it's not particularly efficient, but for solar, it's quite efficient. And wind, they're very efficient. The cost, of course, is, is yeah. the most economical, yeah. which is the other so, so there's a trade-off between economics, efficiency, availability. So it's a complex problem trying to figure out what the energy future needs to look like. <coughs> Any other questions? Okay, perfect timing. So we're ready now to break up into your three groups. And hopefully each of you know where to go. Before you all leave real quick, we're not going to get back together as a group at the end. So I'd like to give another thank you and a hand to our, our guest today. Uh, let, let's make this somewhat an attempt at order. So the group who is in, uh, what was it, 1175, you're probably the ones that have to go the furthest. Follow me. So if you will follow him here, and he'll get you down to the room. Yeah. 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 Yeah.